Well, everybody, today's topic of discussion is Sanctus Bells. Many of you have noticed that for the past couple of Sundays, we've not used our Sanctus Bells. I want to talk about why that is so, what we're going to do going forward, and what is the, uh, what is the tradition, what is the significance, what is the theology behind Sanctus Bells. First of all, we haven't used them the past couple of weeks because of some comments made by Bishop Kendrick during the recent clergy conference. Russell said this, he said, and remember now, Russell is not one to interfere, if you will, with local tradition in terms of liturgy. But he said he would prefer the parishes not use Sanctus Bells unless the parish is a Anglo-Catholic parish. Now, Nativity is certainly not low church, but we're not Anglo-Catholic either. In fact, I think we would best be characterized as a broad church in terms of liturgy, maybe leaning a little bit towards high. And so I took Russell's uh, request uh, on face value. And that's why I cut out the uh, Sanctus spells for a couple of weeks. Frankly, I didn't think many people paid much attention to it. And so I was quite surprised when I heard from a number of parishioners about how much they missed the Sanctus Bells. So I went back and talked to Russell one-on-one. -on -one. We talked about nativity, and he said, it's fine for the Sanctus Bells to be used, and so we will re-implement them. But Russell made this point during our discussion, and I think it's a very good one. He said, most of all, he's concerned that whatever the liturgy is, that people do the liturgy intentionally in understanding the significance behind what they're doing. And so I want to talk about Sanctus Bells for just a few minutes because I'm not sure how many of us really know the reason for Sanctus Bells, the theology behind the Sanctus Bells. So we start with the Eucharistic prayer anyway, and the Eucharistic prayer, of course, is the prayer during which the bread and the wine are transformed. They become the body and blood of Christ. Now, the, uh, the Sanctus Bells originated in the Roman Catholic Church before there was such a thing as the Episcopal Church, before the Reformation. And the Sanctus Bells originally were not the small bells that we ring in our, in our service. They were the large bells in the bell tower, and they were rung at a certain point during the Eucharistic prayer to tell everybody in the community that something important, something of significance had happened. Now, this was a time when, well, when there was really no participation in the Eucharist by a congregation. The priest did the Eucharist, if you will, almost in secret behind a, a, a screen. And so the people couldn't see really what was going on. And so it kind of makes sense, doesn't it, to use those large bells to notify people in the, in the church and outside the church that something is happening. But as things changed and people became more and more involved in the Eucharist, we moved to the small bells that we use now. Now, why are they used at various points during the Eucharistic prayer? Well, again, traditionally they were used at the elevation of the bread and the wine to signify those times. And at the end of the Eucharistic prayer, at the great amen, to indicate that transubstantiation had occurred. Wait, you say, transubstantiation? That's Roman Catholic. We're not Roman Catholics. That's right. We are not. We do not believe that there is a literal transformation of the bread and the wine into the body of Christ. We believe that the the bread and wine now have real presence. In other words, that God is true, excuse me, Jesus is truly present in the bread and the wine, which makes the bread and the wine very, very holy, and we, we handle it carefully and reverently. But still, it happens, this, this transformation into the real presence happens at some point in the Eucharistic prayer, or actually it's the entire Eucharistic prayer itself that participates in this transformation. And so some people believe that it's inappropriate to, to ring the bells at the elevation of the bread and the wine because it calls too much attention to a particular part of the prayer. 
And I get that theology. However, I do think that it's appropriate to go ahead and ray, uh, ring the bells at the, the time we elevate the bread and elevate the wine, but understand that the, the bells at the end of the Eucharistic prayer, at the great amen, tell us that this, this transformation into the real presence has occurred. So that's why we use the Sanctus bells. And so the next time you attend the Eucharist, pay attention to that. It signifies something special has happened something mysterious, something holy, and something foundational to our very worship experience. I hope this helps a little bit. I look forward to seeing you Sunday when we will once again have Sanctus Bells.